All right, how you doing? My name is Vince. I'm Backyard Mangoes with Alex from ah. Tropical Acres Farms in there West Palm go. Beach. There you go. And briefly, we're going to try to talk about a, um, a fertilizer video. We're going to talk about maybe foliar spray versus granular and a little bit of application. But very briefly and quickly, we're going to try to run through some of the elements that are needed um, for good mango tree and health and growth and fruit production. So real quickly, uh, nitrogen. So nitrogen's first number in the fertilizer analysis, the N as the chemical symbol is. Uh, it's critical for pretty much all plants in some amounts. Um, with mango, fortunately, uh, it's a species that doesn't require a lot of it, but it's important for vegetative growth. To get new leaves uh, and branches, we need nitrogen. So at least on some level. So when we're dealing with mango trees, we'll supply it to younger trees usually, but trees that are more mature um, and fruiting size don't really require supplemental nitrogen too much, if at all. Um, so, yeah. but it uh, is something that matters. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I know like my trees for about the first two to three years, I'll put nitrogen, then I kind of cut it back yeah um, or off uh phosphorus phosphorus is the second number in the analysis so that's the the p uh phosphorus is important for uh, shoot initiation and development um so getting new branches um it's very important for that um and um luckily here in south florida uh our phosphorus levels in our soil are usually okay uh so we don't need to provide a lot of it to keep the trees healthy but it is one of the macro elements. Uh, potassium. Potassium is the third number in the analysis. It's the K in the MPK, even though the first letter in potassium is P, not K, but uh, phosphorus got the P. So um, anyway, uh, potassium is really, really important to most fruiting trees, fruit trees in general. It's really critical for fruit development and uh, uh, for fruit structural integrity. Uh, fruit firmness and and so forth um, also plays a role in terms of the internal physiology of the tree uh, as well um, and unfortunately it's often deficient in our soils here in south florida so it really should be supplemented to mango trees kind of throughout their lives um, so it's very important it's probably the most important number on the fertilizer analysis for when mangoes. should they be applying calcium all year calcium or at a uh, excuse me um I said calcium, I'm sorry, potassium. Potassium. It's looking uh, ahead, so looking at the next one. That's okay. So potassium can be applied pretty much any month of the year, but um, it's really important in the lead up to the bloom period as well as during the fruit development process um, because it plays such a big role in those processes. So, um, and part of it comes down to how you apply it and stuff, um, and there's details on that, but like, most people are going to apply into it to consulting. The, yeah, uh, most people are going to at home going to apply it to the ground, um, and you kind of want to give some build up time for that because it doesn't get absorbed instantly. So mm -hmm. you got to give it some time to get absorbed. But some people uh, do it a little differently. Some people break it up into quarters and apply it just uh, quarterly throughout the year. You can do that, and usually when you do that, you're applying less quantity of it at a time. Just more um, frequently. Yeah, and it's Last usually point. potassium is contained in um, NPK fertilizers. So you are supplying some amount of it when you're giving the tree that nitrogen containing fertilizer a lot of the time. Um, how much of it depends on the individual analysis of the product. So. All right. Uh, so the next one, which was calcium. Yeah, calcium uh, is a minor element, a trace element. Okay, so the minor elements are not going to appear in the main analysis on the product, whether that's a foliar product or a granular product, but they will appear on the label somewhere, or they should at least. And um, they, they're called trace elements for a reason. Their amounts are not as high as the macro elements typically, um, but they matter. They matter uh, for uh, you know the development of the fruit and uh, as well as usually uh, factors involving photosynthesis and leaf integrity and development and stuff like that. So calcium is one of those. Um, calcium deficiency is uh, often found in trees that are producing fruit that are getting a lot of internal breakdown. So like jelly seed, as we often call that, is pretty much is always and everywhere a calcium deficiency. And what My triggers Tommy. Okay, your Tommy Atkins. My yeah, Tommy, Tommy Atkins can get it. Um, Tommy got jelly seed on yeah, me this year. Yeah, that's a calcium deficiency. I had to stop shipping them. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, so. Um, so calcium deficiency can actually be triggered by a lot of different things, okay? But that 
physiological problem is a calcium deficiency. So, so whether that's too because, much nitrogen would do it. Yes, so. too much nitrogen so, is a big. I don't know if I was calcium or nit. Chances are, because I, uh, well, I, I don't mean, put nitrogen on that tree, so because that's a big tree. But um, well, anyway, uh, yeah, too much nitrogen is one of the biggest factors with calcium deficiency, actually. But there's others too, so that's not the only yeah. one. So. All right, boron real quick. Boron's another trace element that's uh, important. Uh, a lot of times actually kind of low in South Florida soils um, and uh, usually requires the least amount of it because uh, boron is an element where if you apply too much of it, it can be destructive or oh, even like lethal. That. So be very careful about that one, but it's often will be contained in NPK fertilizers. fertilizers. The better quality ones should have a, a small amount of it, um, less usually than pretty much everything else in the bag. Yeah. So, um, but it's, a, it's an important uh, trace element also. Uh, some other minor or micronutrients, zinc. Zinc, um, so that's one that can be sometimes deficient in our soils here in South Florida. Um, contributes a lot to leaf size. So like when a tree has a zinc deficiency, it will produce what's called little leaf syndrome where the leaves come out like um, much, much smaller than they should. Um, that's an indicator that you could have a zinc deficiency, um, but definitely an important element um, and usually contained in most good NPK fertilizers and, and, and a lot of foliar sprays too. So um, uh, yeah, zinc matters. Zinc matter is that a t-shirt? Yeah, zinc I guess matters? it could be. Um, you know, it depends on your individual situation. It might not be that you have to supplement. Uh, most people don't, but if you have a deficiency, you should. All so right. iron. Iron is an element which is kind of tricky because it is very important um, to uh, leaf health and photosynthesis and uh, keeping the the chlorophyll content of the leaves high. Um, when trees are deficient in iron, they will usually display some yellowing or some chlorosis of the leaves um, that becomes kind of obvious and a lot of times uh, ends up in uh, defoliation if it's too severe. And the funny thing about iron is it can be present in your soil, okay, like you do a leaf uh, or a, a soil analysis rather, uh, and yet your tree is not uptaking it because the pH of your soil is a little too elevated. So even though the iron is there, it doesn't mean it's available to the tree. And so sometimes um, you can apply iron to your trees and it doesn't really do anything. Uh, and you have to use very specific kinds of iron to correct iron deficiency. But um, it, it often will occur in conjunction with manganese deficiency, which looks similar also. That's so the next manganese one I was is to. another trace element that uh, actually is a fairly common deficiency in South Florida, um, in our soil here at least. So, um, and similar to iron in terms of what it contributes to the plant, it, it matters for floral morphology and stuff like that too. So, uh, we got two more that we're going to talk about, but he said some, so I got to back up. Do you do any leaf uh, tissue analysis? Do you have your tree sent away for that or no? Yeah, we have done uh, leaf tissue analysis before, um, mostly to ascertain what they were absorbing because you can do a soil analysis right but it doesn't always tell the whole picture of what right. the tree itself and that can be a very uh species specific thing hmm. um when it comes to plant nutrition and what they're actually taking out of the soil uh, we haven't done one recently we probably should um generally speaking i can look at a tree and i can kind of tell um by looking it over what it is good on and what it might be deficient in right. um and uh some deficiencies are a little more common than others you see that's here, why you so. do consulting <laughs> anyway magnesium magnesium uh magnesium yeah. is another one that's important for leaf health uh mm -hmm. when trees get magnesium deficiency they turn almost whitish and sometimes it's kind of like a checkered pattern uh luckily not too bad here you can run into it sometimes um, it's not too hard of a deficiency to correct. Uh, most NPK fertilizers actually contain magnesium. Uh, if you look at the trace element list, uh, but you can supplement with certain products. Some people apply Epsom salts, uh, but there's like good magnesium products out there too, that can correct magnesium deficiency when you happen to run into it. Um, it's generally not too much of a limiting deficiency with mango here. And last one, uh, unless you have one after the and that you're thinking of copper. Yeah, copper uh, is a minor element that does matter. Um, I'm forgetting what it looks like uh, as a deficiency on the tree because I pretty much never see it here, but like it can occur. 
Um, they need some amount of copper and not all NPK fertilizers will contain copper, but if you're finding that you have a copper deficiency in your soil, you might want to obtain one that does have some copper. Um, usually the process of using copper as a fungicide in a disease control program will actually uh, input some copper into the trees also um, that will usually keep them from becoming deficient in it in a lot of cases. Um, Which is going to kind of lead us to the next thing. So when you said using copper on the tree, obviously you must be talking about a foliar spray. And so real briefly, I was going to, um, you know, this is for, say, homeowners who have one, two, three, four trees and things how they would may do to help their trees be more productive uh, and healthier. Um, and so do you have any thoughts on foliar spraying versus granular or doing both or Share sure. Thoughts. Uh, just a few thoughts. Uh, so for most people, it's easier to cast a granular fertilizer, right? Which, you know, it's quick and it's simple and it doesn't involve any mixing or whatever, right? You're just, you know, following or how a much. Or sprayer. You got, even exactly. If you have one of those so, little so foliar spraying is more cumbersome to apply, right? Um, certain elements are absorbed really well through the soil. Um, especially the macros, right? Your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, the trees will uptake that and they will move it through <laughs> their, uh, their tissue uh, very readily and easily. Um, so a lot of times for those elements, you don't necessarily need to add them any other way than to directly to the soil in a granular form. Minor elements can be absorbed through the soil, but some of them are tricky. Um, and I mentioned how, like, for example, you can be good on iron in terms of your soil levels of it, and yet mm -hmm. the tree's not uptaking it. That's just an example. So, um, I often tell people that, uh, it helps to, um, augment your granular program with a foliar program where you spray the leaves with uh, nutritional sprays that contain multiple minor elements, uh, particularly if you happen to know that you might be deficient in certain elements, it can help. Now, um, they're not a cure-all. Some elements don't really move through the leaves very well. The trees don't translocate mm -hmm. them to other parts of their canopies that great. Um, iron is one of them. <laughs> so it often stays very localized when it's applied, but sometimes it can actually help prevent the tree from growing into a deficiency. It can help keep them kind of regular and uh, maintained at a proper level but a little more work you have to make sure that you're mixing right and um, you have to have you know spraying equipment mm -hmm. and whatnot so but uh you know it's as simple as sometimes if you don't have too many trees getting a little pump sprayer and a, a simple quart of a nutritional spray of some sort there's lots of different products on the market uh, of varying quality you got to do your research and, and so forth but uh, I do recommend foliar sprays, nutritional sprays for fruiting mango trees and trees that aren't fruiting yet. Let so. me ask about the foliar. Some people are, um, so, you know, what's the, my Latin, right? Stoma, the mouth, the stoma on the leaves. Mm -hmm. So when there's foliar spraying, should they be trying to cover the top of the leaf, the bottom of the leaf, or both? If you can apply it to both, apply it to both. Yeah. Do I always apply it to both? No, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah optimally you would you would get it on all the foliage if you're foliar feeding, right? If right. you're if fungicide's a different story, but like um, so, yes, try to get it on. Both well, we'll sides. do a fungicide later one. Who tell us how, where to apply that one and when? Um, what were some other questions here? All right, so granular is easier to apply. Yeah, just take it out of the bag, out of the box. But make sure, okay, and... so it's not as simple as just going out there and just casting stuff out. You do want to know the dosage for your tree, how much you should be applying. You don't want to over apply a granular fertilizer. You don't want to over apply nitrogen or potassium. Would uh, you say it's safer than to err on the side of caution of under applying? Yeah, and, um, you know, that's something where um there's more minute details when it comes to how much to apply and everything which um you know we can get into another time but okay um what about sort of so let's get briefly into some frequency of application um i i know and then i guess depending on the product every product may give you its recommendation 
and then I know reading articles from uh, IFAS or from some of the other um, related articles, some of them have different sort of recommendations for frequency of, of whether spraying or applying a granular. So you want to talk on any of those? Uh, well, frequency kind of depends on your goal. Like if you are trying to get a tree to grow, mm -hmm. like and develop its canopy, then the frequency of applications is going to be higher, right? Than a tree that's mature fruiting and you're not trying to uh, develop its canopy as much anymore because it's already reached that size where it's kind of self-sustaining. So I would say like uh, with young trees uh, that you're trying to develop applications of nutrition should be done, you know, no less frequently than like every other month or sometimes even once a month. Uh, it's kind of our programs more like that with young recently planted trees with, um, with older, more mature trees and you're focusing more maybe on trace elements and minor elements, it can be less frequently. It can be like, you know, every other month or even less frequently than that potentially, mm. um, you know, but, uh, there's more, more to that as Real well. Real briefly, uh, Florida and you know where I'm at, I'm west of you here. And so the humidity pressure is extremely high. Yeah. And so when I wake up in the morning, my leaves, my ground, everything is just saturated wet. Mm. And so for somebody who wants to spray uh, a nutritional spray. Yeah, you want to avoid that. So you want to actually do it, um, you know, when there's no dew on the tree. So do it when the leaves are dry because they're already surface. saturated. Yeah. Right. So, so you, I usually wait until later in the morning or even sometimes early afternoon, depending. But yes, uh, you definitely want to avoid that do that's covering the leaf surface because it won't necessarily allow the leaf to absorb everything you're applying so, yeah it's already been drinking if you will yeah so you know sometimes you'll see people say well you're better off applying early in the morning to avoid wind um you know or excessive heat or whatever but here because of that do uh, you actually usually don't want to be spraying nutritionals uh, or really anything at that point in time because of that factor. Yeah, so everything's saturated for yeah. sure. I don't. I get out there with a leaf blower and blow it dry. <laughs> here, the wind does a pretty good job pretty quick, so we're we get lots of breeze here that helps dry our trees off, even if it's rain. So, by the way, another thing to consider: rainfall. If it's raining, yeah. um, don't you shouldn't be out applying stuff. Uh, wait until the rain has gone away. Um, don't be afraid to apply um, granular fertilizers if it, the rain is in the forecast, but you don't want your granular fertilizer that you are like your bag. You don't want your get, bag getting wet or your bucket of fertilizer getting wet um, in the process of what you're doing. So keep an eye on your forecast. Well, I would say depending on the amount of rainfall, because if it's one of those where we get one, two inches over 24 hours, I don't know. You should like be using a slow release. If you're using a slow release, then uh, a heavy rain, you know, you shouldn't fear a heavy rain too much. So briefly, that, that's a good one. Yeah, okay. So granulars, these days, the better quality granular fertilizers are some sort of slow release. Will it uh, be marked on the bags? Because I've usually, seen Usually, but I've... if you're not sure, you can ask. <laughs> and it, and But like most of the time these days, I think a lot of these... Um, fertilizer companies want you to know that it's a slow release. In Florida, we get so much rainfall that slow release is, to me, almost essential uh, because conventional fertilizers that aren't, uh, they don't last very long. So, um, but good quality slow release fertilizers, even if you're going to get a bunch of rain, you shouldn't be afraid to apply them. Generally, um, and if I'm wrong, correct me, but if you have two bags of fertilizer and they look the same and all the nutrients are the same, but you see one is $10, $15 cheaper. Generally, this cheaper one often I find is a fast release. And so... Yeah, that can happen. Which then means you're reapplying it uh, more frequently. Yeah, you're just wasting product. And, and uh, so if you spend the extra money and you get the slow release, um, it's it's worth it with the rains and things. So... But, so. um, anything else you want to add other than... You have a nice flowers here for the end of November. Yeah, we'll do uh, a different video on this. We'll do a different video. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in. Okay, cool. <laughs> when do you want this video to air? 
Or now, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter.